Ping or PNG is the new web graphic format that handles either GIF or JPEG compressions. It came about in 1995 when the now expired patents threatened the use of the GIF format on websites. And the Flash movie here we have on the left contains our ping file. Actually there's two of them, one for a GIF format and one for a JPEG format. And then the one on the right here you can see is using the bus which is the ping format. So let's get started. We'll close these two. And we're going to start with a brand new Flash document. And we'll give it a name. And I'll call this Practice. Now let's take a look at the files that we're going to import. And we'll go to File, Import, and then Import to Library. <coughs> and these are all PNG files, or PNG files, and that stands for Portable Network Graphics. And a PNG can either be a palette-based, like GIF file, that we talked about, or a multi-channel color file, like a JPEG. And this all happens when the PNG is created. A PNG can also contain metadata that's not used in displaying the image. In this case, the PNG is probably a native file format for a program, and the only one that I'm aware of is the Fireworks program. When it saves its original documents, they are saved as a ping, but then it also can export flattened versions of the ping as a GIF or a JPEG. This is something we learn more about in Fireworks, but uh, what happens usually with people that are using Fireworks, they'll suffix the actual source document for Fireworks with a, an FW, as it's, you see here in these two cases, or create a subfolder so we can distinguish them from the files we're going to use in the publishing versus the files that are used to create them. All these files can be imported into Flash. Two of them are flattened versions of a ping, and the other are actual Fireworks files, so that we can say in Flash, we can import a Fireworks file. We're really talking about importing a Fireworks PNG, its native file format. But we also can be importing a PNG, which is an exported PNG from any program, including Fireworks. And uh, for our exercise now, importing actual Fireworks native source files is not something we have time for. We'll just look at the flat versions of them. So a ping file by itself is not necessarily obvious as to what it might be. In our case, we're going to start with the bus 8 PNG. That is a GIF version of a ping file that was exported from a program to be a flattened GIF. And so if we look in our library, we got two entries. We have the bitmap asset, and we have a new entry we haven't seen before, which is a flash graphics symbol. So the word graphics and bitmap gets a little confusing. This is actually a flash symbol. Let's open it up. It has a timeline like a movie clip. And what it contains in it right now, if I select this and go to Properties, is the other entry, which is our bitmap asset, uh, bus underscore PNG. A flash graphic asset it has differences from a flash movie symbol. We don't have time to explore them fully here. One of them is that a flash graphic symbol does not have an independent playback head. They're often used to hold a single frame graphic requiring layers you know, such as uh, this one, we might want to put some people in the bus and we could add some layers and embellish this graphic in another way. Uh, the reason that it's used is because it has a smaller byte footprint inside the Flash movie and in the earlier days when uh, Flash movies uh, required a lot more economics in terms of bytes, it was used quite often and it still is. It's also used in certain highly synchronized cartooning animations that again, we don't have time to get into at this point. So one of the things you want to do right away is just to rename these graphic images when they come in uh, as a result of importing. So let's name this one um, Bus PNG 8 so we know what it's for or we just delete it and then create our own flash assets as we need to go. Let's first look at the bitmap symbol. I'll open it up by double clicking on its icon and we'll notice that the compression that Flash is considering here is a GIF compression. And that was determined when the file was created, and Flash is just picking up on that information. Again, we could change the compression here, but we'll go with what we have. And all the other buttons are similar to a JPEG or a GIF. We can update it as we need, see what the compression results are, and get a partial preview of the image. 
Okay, so let me go back to scene one, and I'm going to rename this layer and name it the same as the asset in the library I'm going to put on it, which is uh, bus underscore eight dot png, and I'll drag that onto the stage, a little off the stage, so you can see that it actually has a transparent background, and again, that was determined when it was published. And we'll take a look at the properties. We've seen properties for a bitmap asset before. They're just limited to the XY height and width, and there is no instance name. And so we can use the free transform tool, which was open when I started this. Use the letter Q to bring that up and select the asset and uh, the instance and I'll just resize it with a constraint but again you could rotate it and skew it depending on what you want to do with it. Now let's add another layer and this layer will name after the other asset that's in our movie and that is bus png8 and that's our flash graphic symbol so we'll learn a little bit about them, we're not going to get too deep into it, we'll bring this back onto the stage and let's look at the properties and you can see that this is a flash graphic symbol and it has a position and height and width it has some color effects and something to control the timeline which is different than a movie clip and these things we could explore somewhere else and these are used for highly synchronized flash graphic animations such as cartooning and it contains the other asset which is your bitmap graphic and we'll just resize this. This works just pretty much the same. Got to keep in mind it does have a bitmap in it. And we'll make this a little longer. We'll have a longer bus. And this will continue on part two of our video.